Hi everyone, Mike from the Excel Trainer here. It seems that virtually every job these days requires knowledge of Excel, and in many cases that knowledge needs to stretch further than can you create a pivot table. A common question or scenario that's presented at interviews is where the prospective employee is asked to demonstrate their knowledge of VLOOKUP. Yes, I know, XLOOKUP has been part of Excel since 2020, but many companies are still stuck with the older VLOOKUP. So, if you're looking for a new job or a promotion in 2023, this is a must-watch video. If you want to follow along, you can download a copy of the demo file from the link in the description below. OK, so let's start right at the beginning by answering a few questions, starting with what is VLOOKUP? VLOOKUP is the name of one of Excel's worksheet functions, so it's something that you type into a cell that returns a value as an answer. Question 2. What does VLOOKUP do? Well, it searches down a column for a specified value, and when it finds that value, it stops and then looks to the right and returns a value from a specified column. Question 3. Why would you use it? Let me show you with an example. Here's a table showing details of mobile phones and who they belong to within a company. I need to know the model and contract renewal date for the phone that belongs to employee 488 or whichever employee ID is in B1. Now with a small list like this, it's simple enough to search for that information manually. But what if you had hundreds or thousands of rows? What if you had 30 or 40 columns in the table? That's where VLOOKUP can help. So I'll go to B2 and I'll type equals VLOOKUP, open brackets. The first parameter is what I'm looking for, which is what's in B1. Then I put a comma, which is my parameter separator, and then I specify the table array. Now, I prefer to use the term lookup table rather than table array. But in this example, the table array is going to go from E2 through to G9. Now, I could take it up to I9, but at a minimum, it needs to go from E2 to G9. And the reason it has to go with that range is because we have to start with column E, because column E contains the employee ID, and that's what we're looking for. And I need to include the column that contains the answers. As I said, I can go further than column G, but at a minimum, I have to go from E through to G. Then another comma. And then I need to specify three. And the reason I'm specifying three is because the answer in this example is coming from the third column. Now, it's not the third column of the spreadsheet because that would be column C. It's the third column of the lookup table because we are wanting to return the model and the model is in the third column. And there is one more parameter. So I'll put another comma. I need to choose either true or false. And in this example, I'm going to use false. I can either type false or I can double click it from the list and close the brackets and then press enter. False means that the item in B1 must match one of the items in the first column of the lookup table. And if it can't find an exact match, it returns NA as the answer. So if I go up and edit B1 and change it to 489, because it can't find 489 in column E, which is the first column of the lookup table, it returns an NA. I'll change that back to 488. When it comes to the definition of exact match, by the way, VLOOKUP is not case sensitive. In this example, the employee ID that I type into B1 must be a valid employee ID. Therefore, I will always want it to search for an exact match. In a minute, I'll show you an example of where you'd use true as the fourth parameter. But before I do, I'll just finish this example. So I'll go to B3 and type equals VLOOKUP. 
the lookup value, the item I'm looking for, is in B1, comma. The table array, this time, is going to go from E2 through to I9. The reason is I have to include column I because that's got the renewal dates in. Comma. The column index number here is five because column I, the contract renewal column, is the fifth column of the lookup table. And again, for the reason I specified before, I need to choose false. Now that has given me a number. And the reason it's given me a number is because behind the scenes, under the hood, dates are numeric values. To have that displayed as a date, I need to go up to the number section of the ribbon, click the drop down and select a date format. I'll go with long date. I'll also need to widen column B so that it can display the whole of the date. And that is correct. It's showing us the 1st of December. The renewal date here is showing us December. But if we look in the formula bar, the actual date is the 1st of December. I've just formatted column I not to display the day. Because VLOOKUP relies on column positions within the table, inserting a blank column into your table will mess everything up. So if I go to column G, for example, and I insert a blank column, everything now is messed up. I have to go and edit the formulas. The reason that's showing as a zero is because it's looking in the third column of the lookup table, which is column G. The reason that's showing as white is because it's looking in the fifth column of the table, which is column I. OK, let me show you another example, but this time I'll use true as the fourth parameter. Use true when the value that you're looking for does not have to match one of the items in the first column of the lookup table. So using true, you will never get NA. If there is an exact match, it will work like false. But if there isn't, it doesn't return an NA. What it does return, I'll show you in a minute. In B3, I need to display the tax rate, which is based on the salary, in B2. And the lookup table will be E2 to F5. Although right now the value in B2 matches one of the values in column E, in the real world, it's very unlikely that someone's salary will match exactly one of the tax rate bands. So it's more likely there won't be an exact match. So using false will more than likely return NA. And that's why in this scenario, I need to use true. So I'll go to B3 and put equals VLOOKUP. The lookup value is what's in B2. It's the salary. The table array or lookup table is E2 to F5. And the answer is coming from the second column of that table. And as I've just explained, the fourth parameter needs to be set to true. The result is shown as 0.4. I want to display that as a percentage, so I need to go and change the format of B3 to display as percentage. And I'll set that to no decimal places. And that 40% is correct. If we look at what it's doing, it's picking up the 60,001 from B2. It's looking down column E. It finds an exact match and then it goes across to the second column, column F, and it picks up the 40%. But what if I change the salary in B2 to a value that I know doesn't exist in column E, like 60,000? Because I used true, I don't get NA. I get 35%. So how does VLOOKUP arrive at that value? Well, it says if 60,000 was in column E, where would it appear? To answer that question correctly, the lookup table, i.e. E2 to F5, must be sorted in ascending order based on the values in the first column. So in this case, 60,000 would appear between 50,001 and 60,001. And it always uses the lower of those two values, which is 50,001. And the tax rate associated with 50,001 
is 35%. As I said, the lookup table must be sorted in ascending order based on the values in the first column. That's only necessary if you're using true. If you're using false, the lookup table can be in any order. So that's how VLOOKUP works. But there's actually two other lookup functions. There's HLOOKUP and XLOOKUP. But I think that's enough for one video. So I'll cover those two functions in the next two videos. Did you find this video useful? If you did, please give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing to the channel. If you'd like to keep up to date with what I'm up to, why not sign up to my weekly newsletter? And you can do that at theexceltrainer.co.uk. Finally, if you are looking for a new job in 2023, I'd like to wish you the best of luck. But until the next time, and yes, I know I've got the wrong t-shirt on, but I'm going to say it anyway. Have an excellent day.